Hi there, I'm Desmond, Liu Zhenyuan. This is a quick introduction to our work on computational embroidery, which is a short version of my talk in Eurographics 2023 this year. And in this video, I'll be giving you a quick tour of our method that enables the user to generate beautiful stitching patterns that can be sold by the automatic sewing machine. For example, this beautiful feather you see on the screen right now is one of the prototypes we produced. And I'll be showing you more results near the end of the video. Embroidery is a long-standing technique people have been making use of to make all different kind of patterns on garments like our t-shirts, hats, or jeans. It's pretty much everywhere and you probably have a t-shirt with some sort of embroidery patterns on it. I don't know if you ever have this kind of desire to make your own embroidery pattern on your favorite t-shirt. In case you do, the good news is making personalized embroidery patterns is getting easier nowadays without going through months of training because we have a powerful automatic embroidery machine. And this is a video. The user just needs to prepare the patterns and send it to the machine, press the button, and it begins to do its job. And after a few minutes, you can just come back and get the results. So now we have a very powerful machine. That's great, but can the users directly sew the favorite photo onto their jeans? Well, not really, because what the machine expects as input is essentially a bunch of streamlines or polylines. So if we want to have this flower petal on the jeans, we will need to find a way to convert this image into a number of polylines or streamlines. And this conversion isn't trivial at all because we need to take into account some very important design variable. In this pattern, you can see by varying the density of the thread, the pattern produces a smooth color transition from a white to a grayish color. And the second variable is directionality, which can also be used to create a specific look in an embroidery pattern. And the last factor is the machine constraint. For example, we want to make sure the stitches are not too close to each other and avoid cutting the threads as much as possible. And this will make the machine more robust during the sewing process. And when we combine all these three factors together, we will have our algorithm. And the overview is as follows. We will start with a bitmap image with user annotated direction. We will first find a foreground and a background color and extract the density field. Then, by interpolating the user annotated direction as a direction field, we can combine the two fields together and use them to guide the generation of the streamlines. This pipeline can approximate the density and the direction fields at the same time and allow user control for the trade-off between them. And we also make sure the final output is stitchable so that we can make it with our automatic sewing machine. And let's dive into our method. In this part, I'm going to introduce the pipeline for generating the stitching pattern. I will introduce each step in our pipeline briefly. You're always welcome to check out our paper for more details. So the first part of our pipeline is about how to distribute these sources and sinks. The first step is actually the key to get a good approximation of the density field. In order to do this, there are two important questions to ask. How many streamlines do we need and where to start and stop the streamlines? To answer these two questions, the key is divergence. The core idea here is we need to trace terminate streamlines proportionally to the absolute value of divergence. High absolute divergence means the density is changing fast here and we need to spawn a terminate streamline locally to match up the density change. More specifically, we distribute a number of sources and sinks according to the integral of the positive or negative part of the divergence. We have a point sampling algorithm that allows us to quickly sample the number of sources and sinks that we need to satisfy this requirement. With the sources and sinks in place, we'll be able to generate the streamlines. For each source, we need to trace a streamline, and for each sink, we need to terminate a streamline nearby. After this, we will have a rough approximation of the vector field. However, there are still might be lines that are undesirably close to each other, and that's why we need to perform a regularization step. To do the regularization, we build a spring system on top of the existing streamlines. Then on top of the triangular mesh, we formulate a quadratic spring energy that regulates the density, directionality, length, and the position of the streamline. By having a minimization of this energy, we can smooth out the lines and allow the users to control the trade-off between density and directionality by allowing them to play with the weight for density and the weight for directionality. Because of the fact that 
solving the energy minimization we, as we have here is only a single linear solve. The user can explore the trade-off between density and directionality interactively. Here is an interactive demo. You can see the user can just drag the slider. And they can change the weights for density and directionalities and see the preview in real time. After this step, we already have a pretty good approximation for the streamlines. Before sending the lines to the machine to sue, we would need to do some post-processing that connect all the lines into a single loop so that the machine don't need to cut in the middle of the sewing so that the machine will be less likely to break down. And that's pretty much all of our methods. And we use our method to design a few patterns from images and we made them on our embroidery machine. Here I will show you some of them. I will show you the segments and the direction fields on the left, the generated stitching pattern in the middle, and a photo of the embroidery we made on the right. Here is the first example. So in the first example, we segmented the cherry by fruit, the stem, and the leaf. Then the directionality on the leaf gives a very nice texture as generated in the final embroidery output. In this feather example, we annotate the direction field following the direction of the feather so that the yarns go from the shaft to the edge of the feather and create a special feather appearance. This phoenix example is a little bit more complicated. There are 12 segments. We run our pipeline for each one of them and have a fairly nice result. In this landscape example, we have nice color transition on the cloud and the mountain. I especially like the shadow on the mountain, and here you can also see the effect of the directionality. So this is the last example, and before I close, I just want to give a quick summary or takeaway message of this talk. Using our method, we can generate streamlines that approximate the density and direction fields with user-controllable trade-off. We use them for stitchable embroidery patterns, but maybe you can use it for your own application that involves density and directionality as well. The most important insight is to use divergence to guide the generation of the streamlines. So that's pretty much it. If you find our method interesting, please check out our source code on GitHub, or you could go to our project page to find more results and the open access paper as well. With that, I will close and thank you for your attention.